we don't all agree. Um, I think Bill is right that the progressive side really made a terrible mistake in dealing with Obama. Uh, his record really gave very little reason to expect him to move to the left before he became president. He pretty clearly, to an awful lot of us, had made the decision that Bill described perfectly correctly early in his life, that his political career and future lay with being, I'll be, I'll be polite, in the middle of the Democratic Party. And to expect him suddenly in this country at this time to veer to the left uh, made, no, uh, made no sense to any of us. It, it, um, the only conceivable way that might have happened is if the left had been willing to challenge him, to do exactly as Bill said. I, mean, I could not agree more. Uh, we needed to have a real left that was independent in or out of the Democratic Party, but that frightened the Democrats into thinking that if they kept doing what they were doing in the middle, they would suffer a political consequence. And I don't think the left in the United States grasps the danger of its situation because they don't show by their behavior a willingness to, to work, to organize, to go to the meetings, to mobilize, to spend the time that is necessary to make a serious left movement. And until that changes, and it can change, and it has been otherwise in American history, until that changes, the message actually given to those Democrats that hover in the middle is to go further into that middle and not to make a break at all. And I, I'm afraid that the lesson of these elections is to further that problem, not to make it easier for us. Um, it, yes, our elections are always a little bit local, a little bit national, but the polling that Albert correctly cites that 63% of the people coming out of the election voting action said it was the economy. That's not a local issue in most cases. That's a national issue. And they knew they were voting on something that they hoped would solve what they view as a national problem. And I think their votes reflect that. About the US dollar, which may be of more interest to some of you since it will affect Germany for sure, um, you should make no mistake. The decision of the United States about the value of the dollar is not made in regard to Germany. That is, if there's a cheaper dollar that makes the German situation worse, who cares? We don't. Nobody in the United States that I know gives a damn about the, Germany one way or the other. You are old Europe, remember? Mr. Cheney explained to you, you are old Europe. So the decision is not made on that, on those grounds, and, and no, no one should work under that uh, illusion. Germany is a problem for the United States because it's a competitor. Therefore, there are forces in the United States who are interested in a cheaper dollar so that foreigners buy our goods rather than German-made goods. What goods? What goods? Yes. That's a good question, but there are enough left, be careful. There are enough gifts that it's liberal. All kinds, all kinds, military, aircraft, all kinds of stuff. Um, remember our president said correctly that if there's any, he didn't use quite these words, but I will use the words he knew, he, he believes these words, he's smart enough to know. We have had, a, just to remind everyone, we had a stock market crash in March of the year 2000 a crash, like 1929. The index level of the stock, the most important stock market, which is called NASDAQ in New York, reached a level of 5,000 in March of, of the year 2000. Today it's 2,500, are you all with me? We are half the value of the shares of most of the key companies in this country today that it was a decade ago. It's referred to on Wall Street as a lost decade for these reasons. We never recovered from that stock market crash. We postponed the disaster of that crash by pumping money into the American economy and dropping interest rates faster and further than ever before in our history as a nation. That created a mountain of money that fueled a bubble called the real estate bubble building homes, building additions to homes, a tremendous bubble to postpone the effect of the stock market crash. By 2007, that bubble, artificially stimulated with low interest rates, blew up. And what we now have is an economy that has no more bubble. What's gonna save us now? The stock market is still in the toilet. 
the housing is a disaster in our society. Right? What is going to, Mr. Obama grasping at straws, because our economic system is in such terrible trouble, imagines that we could get an export boom. There might be a bubble. Could we redevelop the American economy, save it, by basically wiping all of you out, competing you into nothing? Cut a deal with China and work something out. So there's all this pressure from those companies that see an advantage in a cheap dollar. Cheap in relationship above all to the euro. The problem is there are too many companies on the other side of that question inside the United States. All the companies that have made investments in Europe, they don't want that to happen because they participate in your exports. And they don't want to change the relationship to China because they've just invested a fortune in China and they don't want to lose that. 60% of the imports into the United States from China come from subsidiaries of American corporations. They're the ones who make sure that the dollar and the Chinese remain contra. It's a fight inside the United States between two groups of enterprises that are, and that will decide the outcome. The position of the other countries is really a peripheral to that. Don't expect much because there's a stalemate pretty much, which is why you don't see much. You see much talk about the dollar, but very little action because they haven't figured out how to one side or the other to win that struggle. Those who want a cheaper dollar make all the usual patriotic arguments about jobs. And those who want to keep the dollar high make the same patriotic arguments about the important symbol of the dollar. This is all, to use a technical term, bullshit. <laughs> this is about your group of enterprises trying to make an advance with a cheaper dollar versus those who do not want a cheaper dollar. They want a more expensive dollar because that's what their business needs and that fight is being worked out now. And you really shouldn't be misled by the language in the newspapers written usually by people whose economic education is so abysmal that they, they wouldn't understand it even if you explained it to them, but nobody explains it to them. Anyway, they get press releases from the two sides about patriotism. 